you. Good afternoon. Um, good evening to each and every one of you that have tuned in. Come on and tag someone and tell them that we're on tonight. Rama International Ministries, we are here tonight. We are here tonight to be a blessing. To those of you who are viewing and came on, thank you for coming on tonight. We certainly, amen, thank you. We appreciate the Lord for blessing you, amen, to tune in. Uh, tag somebody and let them know, amen, that we are on. It is time, amen, for the prophetic, amen, praise God, verb. We're going to do this, amen, praise God, and we're going to work what the Lord has given us, amen. And we want you to tune in on, on this coming Wednesday night. Mark your calendars. This coming Wednesday night. Mark your calendars. Mark your calendars. This coming Wednesday night. Prophetic proverb. Prophet, prophetic verb. I'm sorry. Prophetic verb. We're going to be on. We're going to bless you. Now listen. It's going to be a little twist. For those of you who are not used to. Amen. The new. I'm bringing forth a new. It's going to be a new twist. So, so sit down and prepare yourselves for the new. And you're going to look for something. But it's going to be something else. Prophetic verb. We appreciate you. Next Wednesday night. I don't know quite the date of that day. Amen. Praise God. Do you have a calendar that we can actually give them the date on that? Amen. Praise God. June the 30th. June the 30th. Prepare yourself. Amen. Prophetic verb. It's going to be a time in the Lord. It's going to be a great time wonderful, lovable, enjoyable time that we're going, amen, to bless the people of God. Thank you for tuning in. Thank God tonight for all of our leaders, our pastors, amen. Praise the name of the living God. We will not be on on Sunday, so I'm using tonight, this afternoon, amen, praise God, to utilize the time for Sunday morning, amen, praise the name of God. We thank those of you, amen, praise the Lord for your patience. We're going to quickly, amen, praise God, go into our message. Again, we thank God for all of you. We thank God for Raymond. We thank God for all of our leaders. Amen. We thank God for you, you, and you. For Bishop Lamar Bell, we appreciate you. God bless you, and thank you for coming on. In the Bible, in the Bible, in the Bible, amen, in the book of Ephesians, amen, 18.22, it says the eyes, Woo, God, this is good. Praise the name of God. He says, amen, for the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Mm, 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 mm. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. For your eyes, for the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of his glory of his inheritance, what? In the saints. Y'all need to get that. In the saints. God said, I'm giving it to you. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he has wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the, in the heavenly places. Far above, listen, principalities and powers and might and dominion and every name that is named, named not only in this world, but amen, also in that which is to come. Come on, catch this. And has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the what? To the church. He said, I've given you sufficiency. I've given you power, amen, over all things. He said, I've given it to the church. You are the church. He said, I've given it to you. I've given everything that you need to you. I've given it all to you. Every dominion, every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. All might, all principalities has to fall under your authority. I want to talk about, amen, praise God, something that... 
and kind of made me, amen. I don't know, sometimes when God gives me names and, and he talks to me and shares stuff with me, I have to wake up. Are you like this? You have to write stuff down. So I had to write this name down and I couldn't quite get amen, all of what it meant. So I wrote, wrote the word, but I did not write it in a plural form or amen in an ing form. I just wrote it out. And then I had to look at it on a different scale. And tonight I want to talk to you, amen, about bootstrapping. The bootstrapper or bootstrapping. You need to go ahead and tag that. Bootstrapping. What is bootstrapping? It is the process to achieve abundant living. A righteous lifestyle by making it against all odds. Bootstrapping. Making it against all odds. Through godly, direct living or our action plan an action plan an action plan by making it against all odds come on through godly direct amen praise god actions plan god's direct action plan the step of a good man is ordered by the lord it is in it is a mindset Come on now, that allows you to rise above, over, and beyond all merry things that would take you out. Yes. Mm. It is a mindset, amen, pra praise God, it is a mindset that allows you to rise over, above, and beyond ordinary and become extraordinary mm, mm, thinkers, thinkers, by taking responsibilities for your own thoughts, feelings, actions, or word actions, and life circumstances. Bootstrapping. You're taking responsibility for you. Some people don't ever take responsibility for themselves. Bootstrapping is a, val a valued system. That directs your relationship with you and God. Bootstrapping. I'm getting myself together. That's all it is in a nutshell. I'm getting myself together. I'm going to mark you the perfect man. And I'm going to reach perfection. I must, I shall, and I will. Mm, that was Sunday. That was Sunday. I must, I shall, and I will. Bootstrapping. Uh, bootstrappers, amen, function like a soldier in boot camp. Who through basic training and is always preparing and getting ready to take on any situation that represents a potential challenge or threat in the pursuit of his or her walk in the Christian life. They preparing themselves. Going through one test, fail, I'm already ready, getting ready, getting ready, getting ready for the next. Don't just lay around crying and worrying. I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm teaching, Irene. Don't lay around and just keep, my God, processing and going through it. Prepare for the next. That's what soldiers do. They'll lose some in the battle, but they're preparing for the next. Mm, 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 mm. Bootstrapping takes the heat, the humiliation, suffering, and pain in moments, amen, of preparation for the joy Peace and happiness. Listen, they went through humiliation, suffering, pain, but then they turn around and start preparing themselves well for victory marches. Yes. Oh my God. They start, I'm, I'm telling you, they start preparing themselves for victory marches. This is what Ephesians 6, 10 and 12 says. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of, of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against power, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto your, you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having all, having done all to stand, listen what he's saying, listen what he's saying, bootstrap yourself. He said, start standing. He said, after you've done all you can do, you don't just about muscle up every strength you can muscle up. He says, stand therefore, having your lawns girded about with truth. Don't let the enemy lie to you. He said, stand on truth. 
get back up and stand on the truth. I might have fallen, but I still can get up. I might have messed up, but I still can get up. I might not be what I should be, but I'll never go back to where I used to be. Oh God, that was good. That was good. And having, amen, the breastplate of righteousness. I got to live something. I got to, my name got to mean something. I got to live a holy life. Holiness is, 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 is right. And holiness without no man shall see the Lord. I want to see the Lord. I, I don't want to live. Amen. Praise God. Just to have all of this down here. And end up can't enjoy all of that up there. Woo. That was good Apostle Bell. Yes. That was really good. If my God Philippians 4.13 says. After you done bootstrap yourself. Now you can say this. I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me because I put me some prayer in. I put me some worship in. I put me some meditation. I got into the word of the Lord. I know how to live holy. I know I got a struggle on my hand, but I know how I can do it. I know how to do it. I'm going to bootstrap myself down. Bootstrapping, amen, is a way of taking responsibility for building your life through Christ while bringing, watch this, reality to your dreams and visions. You got to bring reality to some things. It's some things you know is too far-fetched. Don't be talking about, I'm going to lose 90 pounds in three weeks. No, 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 no. It's going to take a time. It's going to take some time. Took some time to get all that weight on us. It's going to take some time to get it on. First of all, we got to learn how to curb the appetite. We got to learn what to eat and what not to eat. We got to learn, amen, how to glue our mouths down when certain things come. I had some pecan pie today and I couldn't glue my mouth down. But guess what I did? I didn't eat a whole slice. I ate me two little spoons. Got me, well, two forks. I got me a fork and I put, got a little bit. And I got me a little bit more, but I left the other for the other place and they ate it all. I'm not going to call no name. Bootstrapping is a way, amen, of taking responsibility to build your life through Christ while bringing reality to your dreams, your vision. I am teaching me, y'all better hear this now, this is what you got to do for yourself. I am teaching me how to do it like a champion and more than a conqueror. Through him that loves us. See, I, I'm getting a hold of some stuff. So you got to take hold of responsibility. You cannot allow yourself to talk responsibility, but you got to take hold of responsibility. You got to take hold to the altar. You got to take hold, amen, to, my God, unrighteousness. You got to take hold of that thing and hold that thing down. The Bible says you got to bring your body under subjection. Take hold of it. Bootstrap yourself down and say, listen, this month going to be my month. And I got to work this thing all month. I got to do some work. I got to put some work in. Most Christians don't like to put work in. Uh-oh, I just said something. I have learned that if I chose or choose to be kept down, only if I don't see those metamorphoses or metamorphical boots See, when you, amen, chose or you decide that you just going to talk yourself out of a miracle. Yes. I don't want to be bothered. It's just not my day. Who told you? You better thank God God woke you up on that day. And he doesn't decide. It ain't going to be your day no more. So sometimes we can say things to flip, amen, flip mouth. Bootstrap your mouth down. Yes. Your mind. It's been mind over matter. Matter over mind. Sometimes you got to work stuff. And I've learned, amen, praise God, to offer me something besides regret. Woo, that was good. I offer myself something far greater. I can smile. Yes. I can be okay. I must be okay. I must smile. I must be about my father's business. I must stay focused. If I don't stay focused for nobody else, I need to stay focused for myself. You need to go ahead and tag that. Don't you give up because somebody else gave up. Don't you have a friend that you're walking behind. And because they want to give up, you behind them mimicking. I'm going to give up too. They ain't seeing nothing. They ain't doing nothing. So I'm like, no, 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 no. You don't need that kind of friend. That kind of friend to get you lost in the woods. Mm, 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 mm. You got to offer yourself a way out of current predicaments. It becomes my own fault 
if I don't. You can't keep blaming people for amen, but you didn't bootstrap yourself down. Sometimes you got to just be true to the game. Yes. Confess your faults. Confess your faults. Tell God about it. I messed up. Just, just be honest. Just, I mean, I, I messed. Have you ever cooked something and you messed it up? I cooked something not too long ago. If I didn't mess that food up, but I kept on, I, I bet you I got some perfection out of it. I bet you it was edible when I finally got it straight. It took me a couple of times. And, and, and I want to say this, Brother Gerald is going to laugh if he's on and he might not be on. But listen, we were, I was trying to cook some, some something and Brother Gerald said, Mother, I think you don't overcook that. I said, oh. I said, like, this young man know how to cook it and I don't. I never wanted to learn. But when you want to learn when you want to do something, when you want to live holy, when you got a commandment in your thought, in your head, in your heart, not just God said it, but I want to live holy. It's a different than God telling you something and you walking in disobedience. When you want to do it, it'll get in your heart and in your spirit and you'll decide to do it. Yes. It becomes my own fault when I don't take ownership and responsibility. He said, be still and know that I am God. He said, bootstrappers do not see themselves as victims. Not all the time. I will always be a victim. You need to tag that. I will not always be a victim. But I have confidence in their amen, praise God, in my God. In my God-given ability to rise beyond the limits of my own expectation. I must go beyond them and what others think that I'm not going to rise and my God go through. I'm not going to let people impose on who I am and dictate what I am to become. I'm me. I love me. When you learn how to love yourself, you will begin to love others. When other people box you in and you become a prisoner in that box of what they have said and you lock your own self in to what they have said, others' opinions should not make you become opinionated with yourself. I don't care what nobody say. I love this plus girl here. I love this girl. This girl right here, she is witty, she's sharp, she's intelligent, she's great. David said he encouraged himself. I'm loving, I'm supporting. Look at here. You got to go ahead and put those accolades on you. Oh, so and so, so pretty. I'm not going to tell myself I ain't pretty. I'm not going to tell myself I don't look good. David said he got in the mirror and encouraged himself. And you got to learn how to do that. After you have been bootstrapped, Philippians said you can do it all. You can do it all. You can do it all. Then he turns around and said, be still. When you do it, be still. Bootstrappers do not see themselves as victims. But they see themselves as victorious. Beyond, amen, the limit of this expectation of other people. They rise above it. They go, amen, praise God, and look at their sufferings. They cry about it, yes. They hurt about it, yes. They feel bad about it, yes. But what do they do? They don't continue to say, I've fallen uh -huh. and I can't get up. They always tell themselves, get up. Get yourself up. Let me tell you something. There's a voice that comes to me so often. And, and I can hear this voice sometimes in my sleep. And it's amazing. My kids, amen, my daughters, amen, will tell me, say, Bell, get up. Come on, say, Bell. And some folks might say, well, that's so disrespectful. You ain't my child. Don't get it out of family business. Don't, don't get into the family feud. I would hit that buzz and say, get out. But they'll tell me, say, get up, Bell. Get up. Get up. But when you know you got to get up for other people, you won't lay down long. Oh, Sunday. When you know there's somebody else depending on you besides you. But it's a great thing to know when you're depending on you. I got to get up for my own self. I got to get up for others. There's somebody depending on me. There's somebody. I got to hold their back up. I got to hold their hands up. I got to live holy. I can't sneak and hide. I got to do it right so my name will go further. See, your name got to mean everything. You can walk in a bank, and if you've done right by the bank people, you'll walk in and they'll call you by your personal name. Uh, hey, Miss Bell, how are you? I get that so much. And I wasn't known in some of these banks. I was new down here. And all of a sudden, they see me when I pull up at the bank in the drive-thru. Hey, Miss Bell, I walked in there Friday. Someone done stole my identity. 
And that lady looked at me. She said, come on back, Miss Bell. Come on over here to my office, Miss Bell. I said, okay. I said, I thought I had, no, no, ma'am, you could come on back. And that was so rewarding, so refreshing, that your name represents something yeah. besides mess. My God, my God. And Mr. Mrs. Messes. Jesus. You're messy. You're messy. You're messy. You're messy. Mm. You're messy. Let's <laughs> leave that messiness alone. Bootstrappers, they, they, they develop inner strength from God through their experiences. Philippians 4, 6 said, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made unto God. See, you got to, some things you got to stop calling folk gossiping about. Go to God and talk about it. Go to God, talk about it. Talk about it to God. Talk about it to God. God gave me something I was listening, and it woke me up. And he said, go ahead and write this. And it was funny. I laughed. I chucked about it. I wrote some stuff down. Some of you all, amen, you don't laugh enough about nothing but me. Oh, I'm so glad. I ain't no God in the lost it. <laughs> don't, don't be careful what supplications come out your mouth and what you're laughing about with others because, my God, you can fall in a ditch too. I told my God, my, my daughter's coach, she said something, and I had to check the little girl. I said, don't you ever say, we always got something going on in our family. I don't ask to be sick. My family don't ask to be sick. We didn't ask for death to come. I said, now, so you won't let, I, I, listen, don't make me pull your hair out, little girl. Mm. I said, now, you shut up, because it could happen to your family. That's right. Sometimes people will try to try you. We all got a life that will come to a halt at some point in time. Bootstrappers know how to be a base. They get in a situation, they'll cry, they'll hurt, they'll go through, but they'll yet have compassion for other people. Y'all, that was good, Apostle Bill. That was good. Listen, listen. Bootstrappers were the strategy. Listen to me. Bootstrappers were the strategy of our forefathers. I looked this up. And our fourth mothers used to raise families to work the soil, start new businesses, run the government, and cared for those less fortunate. They did all of this back then bootstrapped. They was bootstrappers. They motivated and energized themselves. Ooh, what? Going through all of that stuff of slavery. They energized themselves. They learned how to survive and strive and live. And others, amen, with phrases, amen, praise God. They, for, they were careful with these type of phrases and cared for those less fortunate. They motivated and energized themselves, pulled themselves up by the bootstrap, they would tell the people. Get that bag, get, get, get that, that cotton sack and pull yourself up by the bootstrap. Get up from there. I know that sack of, uh, uh, of cotton is heavy. Get up. Get them peas out that ground. Get those potatoes out the ground. Dig harder. You can find it. We got to make this share money. Yes. Oh my God, that was good. You got to get out there. You got to pull yourself up by the bootstrap. Psalm 66, 10 and 12 said, For thou, O God, has, amen, proved us. Thou has tried us as silver is tried. Thou brought us us into the, to the net. Thou latest affliction upon our loins. Thou hast caused men, listen, to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through the waters, but thou broughtest us out into a wealthy place. The suffering was never meant to be in vain. He said, I went and took you through that just to bring you out of that. Mm hmm I don't want to keep saying and hear people say, Lord, you know, I, just, I, must, I, I must be cursed. I ain't talking with you. I ain't going to accept that. Well, I, I, no, 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 no. I'm beyond that thought. I, I'm, I'm above that thought. I'm not, be, I, I'm, I'm not beneath. I'm above. I'm in. I'm not out. Oh, my shit. Yes, Lord. When, com when combined with the, their lifestyle, my God, they put faith with it. They combine all of the pain and the struggle and they put faith and hard work to create the atmosphere, listen, that will make their make things happen in their lives. They made stuff. They kept going until they made things happen. 
God will over flood you with miracle signs and wonders. He will over flood your life. You keep talking. You keep going. You keep bootstrapping yourself up and saying what you got to do. I, I got to do all of this shit. I got to get to get it. I don't have time, amen, to be talking to you and we sitting down talking about folk, about what they did and how they did it. Listen, get a life. You keep going through stuff in life. You'll be sick of talking about dead dirt. You'll find yourself talking about pure life. Ooh, I feel bad yesterday. Well, baby, listen. You, you know how your day went. So you don't even encourage them with that mess. You just look at them like, I wish you knew half the stuff that my body went through. You will shut your mouth. You will be talking about, well, my ankles was hurting. Baby! My whole hip was hurting. Your, your what? And I'm still going for it. I'm still creeping around. I probably cannot walk you. Oh, Shandi I probably can do it better than you. If I keep on making that potato salad, I'm going to get it all perfected and I'm going to invite some of y'all to eat a little crumb. Yes. And you better eat it without complaining. Amen. Cheerings. Amen. Cheerings. Y'all better eat it. Faith and hard work to create the atmosphere that would make things happen in their life. They believe, listen, listen, bootstrappers believe that God had given them everything they needed that pertained to life. That's in the book of 2 Peter 1 and 3. According as his divine powers has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us yes. woo, to My glory God. and virtue. My God, my God. No matter what your circumstances are, where you are standing, amen, on your social economical ladder yes. of life, you already have everything you need to pull up and be a bootstrapper. You have everything. Yes. God's giving you all sufficiency. He said, you got it. So what you going to do? So what now? What, what we've said some things. What are you doing with it? What you gonna do? How you gonna work it? How you gonna work it? Get up. Get out of that prostate place of being bent over all these months and years. It's time to stand. It's time to start living life now. It is, amen, praise God, time to get a piece of the pie. My God. Who cut me a piece of a pecan pie? <sighs> Or take the whole pie. Ooh, shot. Mm. I would have to slice that very, amen, slowly and hide it from some certain people. I've got two grandsons that love pecan pie. Yes. And that's Kale and Martinez. Pecan pie. David encouraged himself. Second Samuel, amen, 5 and 10 says, and David went on. You got to go on, baby. You got to stop this foolishness. And go on. And he grew great. And the Lord God of hosts was with him. David messed up. David had Uriah killed. But guess what he did? David got up. David's baby died that he had the father, this young lady. And David said, no need to be sitting there now. The baby gone. I got work to do. Sometimes you got to get up and shrug your shoulders and say... Oh, well, I got some work to do. Your superior, your superior strategy is needed. A strategy is simply a plan that is designed to achieve a goal. That's all it is. That's all it is. It is the way to get from one stage in life to the to another. Each time you take a step, you should already have started. Listen, this is good right here. I had to write this down. I would be thinking then. Each time you take a step, you should already have started planning the next one. What's your next move? How you gonna do it? Now the enemy done saw you fall. The enemy done laughed at you because you ain't got no friends. So he already see you lonely as crap. Yes. What's your next move? What's your next move? What you gonna do? How you gonna handle it? You gonna make your strategy. You gonna sit down and you gonna come up with, I can do bad by myself. So you start planning you some new days. Yes. Some days of going out, getting something done. Well, I heard somebody say, well, I'm too sick. Walk out though. Mm -hmm. Just go out though. Yeah, just go out though. Where's out those, Apostle Bill? I can't go down the steps. Open the door to the house. 
Open the door to the apartment. Open the door. Oh, open the door. Eat the cake, Anna Mae. Stop acting like you can't do nothing. But I can't get. Open the door. Look outside. Look up in the air. Look around and be thankful. Sometimes we complain so bad we don't even open the door and go outside and be thankful for the sunshine that we see. Now I'm just going, I don't know if I feel like letting my curtains up. That's your fault. Because it's in your authority to take your hand and open those curtains up or open that door and do something. I understand when we're sick and we're not able to do it. Don't get me wrong. I'm talking about those of us who are capable. Of, I'm talking about people who are flat out sorry. Just ain't gonna do it. Just I'm just gonna sit here. Maybe somebody will open the door. Ain't nobody coming to your house sometimes. People didn't come and visit me every. Uh, every I, I was sick for six months. Didn't nobody come and see me no every day. I didn't have no 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 straight out visitors. I had my family. I had my kids. I had my husband. I had grandkids. Didn't know everybody come and show me and see me. I had people that was checking on me because the pandemic was out there. I didn't expect them to take their lives and risk themselves. I want somebody to come in the door. I ain't coming in the door. I left signs out there. Don't open my door. If you got anything, throw it at the back door. Spray it before you even give it to me. Y'all know the ropes where I had it. And some of us was terrified. And then after the terror left up, some of you went to going everywhere. But I don't want to go to church. They start church. I just ain't going here everybody. But you everywhere else. Some people are already out. They doing them. You got to learn how to do you, boo. Keep it, keep it moving. Keep it moving. Second Peter, amen, one and three. You, you, you got everything that you need. You got everything that you need. David went on and, and, and grew great. Each time you take a step, you should already have started another plan. New ideas, not, not allowing yourself time to, to get barred down or overwhelmed with too much thought at one time. Cooking that mind to death. You know, some people overprocess stuff. You ever had somebody who had chronic depression, like a chronic headache? You talk and they be like, okay, okay, okay. In a few minutes, you look at them. They over in a corner done reached and grabbed that that you snatched from them. It's just like taking a, 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 a seven-year-old who done, you done let kept a pacifier until they done grew up and ready to go to school. Right. And that baby sitting in there, them teachers ain't going to let that seven-year-old, five-year-old, and six-year-old suck on that pacifier. They don't snatch that thing from your baby. And then that baby can act, talk, and, and keep everybody distracted. Sometimes you got to snatch your own pacifier away. You keep sucking off a of pain, sucking off of this, and sucking off. Well, they say it. I don't care. Sometimes some people you can't deliver, you got to let go. You got to get out of God's space so he can give the grace that they need to get delivered. You can't hold some folks all night. Just hug them and hold them and hold them and hug them. Some folks you got to let go. Let them bop their head. I bet you when it's time, amen, for them to look at that wall again, they won't let that little noggin go in that wall. <laughs> They'll be willing to look that up. Listen, don't, don't look. I ain't, I ain't blind. I see it. I, I see. I see more than you think I can see. This was the problem that I've had with church people as a whole, not just Raymond. But people think because we are no longer in a building and the building, amen, the church left the building, that the saints of God, amen, praise God, they got this thought or indignation that you can't see them. Do you not know it was a spiritual thing all the while when you was in church in a physical building that God showed prophets, senior prophets, generals? We saw in the spirit realm and still can see in the spirit realm. Yes. Just because we're not in the physical house, do you not know God is still seeing? And he's still revealing? He's still showing stuff? And some of you are duck high dogs. Still seeing. Bootstrappers, they don't stop doing what's right. They keep on, even if it's a struggle, they will still keep trying to keep going. They'll get themselves up, brush themselves off, and try to live again. They don't just stop. They don't just, just stop. Bootstrappers help you, 
amen, to assume personal responsibility. Sometimes you got to go ahead and get that responsibility about yourself. You got to get it right. They come, it comes a time in life when you must refuse to be boxed in hardship, your past, and bring in pain to your own self. Sometimes, amen, you feel, amen, that God might have left you. He ain't left you. Why, Apostle? Because he know how crazy you are. Amen. He don't leave the crazies in the insane asylum. He stay there with you and write your paper notes. He writes your treatment plan. They're coming out. This is what this is what's wrong with Abigail. Abigail coming out. You need to go ahead and tag that. Abigail is coming out. Abigail is coming out. You got to bring that situation, amen, under subjection. Deeming the time of God in any of your situation. Bring a particular, amen, praise God. Being, being particular and careful how long you stay in your old lifestyle. Bootstraps helps you, amen, to assume personal responsibility. You can get yourself out and start worshiping God, spending more time with God. What did you do more of with God during this pandemic? Did you spend more or less of time with God? How did you fixate your heart and your spirit, amen, when you could not see a physical human being that normally preached for you? Think about how long you sat on that pew. And you just was mad, you was hurt, you was frustrated. And you just came to church because the church doors was open. And then all of a sudden the doors closed. And then you got, amen, watch this, and I'm going to hurt somebody when I say this. You got angry with God and you didn't even know it. You took your sinful life out on God. And you quit loving God the way you said you were loving Him. And you started cheating on your husband man. You cheated so much on God that you got angry. I'm just not going to do this. And I, God said, what you mad about? I didn't leave you. I didn't forsake you. You walked away from me. Bootstrappers understand when they've walked away it's how to get back. And they come back quickly. They'll come back, amen, with their head bowed. Making their request known. Crying on God, begging God to be merciful unto them. They won't stay there, amen, praise God, in conflict, trying to, amen, make themselves feel okay about. He said, don't you even laugh about your follies, because it's not funny to me. Amen. Hmm. I don't like to be around people who laugh about what they're doing and think it's a joke. Because Angel told me these words, and I, I'm glad I learned that word. Karma is a mess. It is a mess. It is one mess. Take control of your thoughts. Bootstrapper will help you get out of the box. That is smothering your ambitions. Darkening your pathway. And prohibiting your development. And your growth. Do you not know most of the time we blame other people. But you're at fault. Mm, 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 mm. Darkening your pathway. You the one clothed on curved enough and don't want to be bothered. But I just don't feel like it. I'm going through so much. There's somebody else going through something just a little bit worse than you. And you the one kept chasing God, uh, some of us, about the title, the title, the title. I want to be this, this, that, and the other. And then as soon as God stick you out there, you the one start complaining about all the responsibility he put on you. Well, I just can't do it no more. I'm just not. I, I, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, my season of God, so you better hope your time ain't up. If I really tell the truth, I should have let the enemy got you last month. But I stayed my hand with you. I wouldn't let him touch you. I'm thankful for a gracious God. I'm thankful for a merciful God. I am overwhelmed with how God looked at me and said, my God, peace be still. He gave me peace when he should have disrupted my peace. He should have swallowed me up. But God said, I'm not going to turn you over to the wheel of your enemies. He's because they are my enemy. And I'm so thankful for it. Bootstrapper allows you to constantly fine tune and redefine your life of Christ as you become more in tune with your life of purpose and destiny. Responding to the challenges and obstacles along the way. So you got to respond to these challenges. You got to say something. You just can't have somebody talking to you and you just don't say something. He said, and start developing yourself in the life 
and the disappointments and setback. Bootstrapping, amen, demands of us a higher moral standard to God commandments. God said, I require more from you than I do sinners. Because you know that. It's a certain age you get your mama look at you. She don't see a sorry. She says, I'm going to get you. Because you know that. Now, now I know, I know you know that. I know you know better. Don't, don't stand here in the mouth. But, but you said, uh uh. You, you, you know that. Don't act like I ain't said nothing. You know that. Now, I meant that. I meant that. Bootstrapping, amen, challenge us to have courage of our conviction to make the right decisions and do right things, even if it, it means that we sometimes have to stand alone. I'd rather be by myself than to stand with a group of liars, backbiters, and haters, envy, strives. I don't want to be around those kind of people. You half looking at me. You saying something slick. You doing stupid stuff. I don't want to be around you. I don't, if, if I tell you it's a snake and you say it's not a snake, I'm not going to be with you with that snake. Won't The serpent won't kiss me and go in my mouth with his tongue. Shut up, Rosha. Our action step. Work together. Build together. What is the true spirit of collaboration? Many of our efforts don't ever get off the ground because we don't really understand what the process involves. Sometimes the process of your life, amen, might be going through stuff because you ask God, let me walk in a possibility of shoes. I understand. I done went through this and that. He's like, I didn't call you to be no apostle. I know I suffered. I suffered hard. I didn't call you to be a, an apostle. It's a different than you suffering for righteous sake for what you got to encounter for what calling he put on you. But my calling, you might not want to suffer in some areas of life that an apostle suffer. We, we walk in a room and folks want to take us out. They just look at us and say, um, the demons tremble. They, they, they get bad. Folks' mouths go to getting rooted out. They just go to cutting the food. Throwing their hands. Riding, and, and I used to look at people. And they used to be riding while you preach it. You don't read it after you get through. Some of you don't read that stuff. Mm, I'm going to leave that now. I'm going to leave that now. I'm going to leave it out. Now. Many of our churches. Or our church efforts has failed. When all of the responsibility. Ended up on. The shoulders of one person or two. The size of many of our ministries are small or medium size. So we work one to two people to death because what? Many don't want to participate, take charge, take responsibilities in the load to help lighten the load of ministry. So they just sit back and let it go. And then they go to talk about the church real bad. Well, we need to do this and we need to, you ain't doing it, Willis. Some of you ain't doing stuff with ministry. Uh-huh. I know you're going to get mad, but I'm good. I'm cool. Because God's kingdom going to get built one way or the other. I don't want to rock the crowd in my place. I'm a bootstrapper. So I'm going to strap back up. I told my pastor friend today, Pastor Jackson, or yesterday. I believe it was yesterday. She said, are you okay? I said, I'm focusing well. I'm okay. I'm great. I just need prayer. I just need the covering. I just need y'all praying for me. I just need Raymond to keep praying. I just need the body of Christ to keep praying. I've got people in the upper room. And they're on the wall and they're not coming down. And they're not even of this fold. They're not a part of Raymond. But they are on the wall and they're not coming down. We need prayer, strategic prayer in this hour because of the turn and the cliff of the turn that God is getting ready to turn, amen, and chose the kingdom yes, yes. to be placed in. This is not about church. This is about kingdom work. Yes, yes. Many of you going to miss God mad with church. Mm, 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 mm. We need people who can bring skills, influence, commitment, and more to the table. We've been on this mountain long enough. 
long enough we've been there. We must be around positive thinkers who can share in the trusting of relationships. This may go against the grain for many who are in, in the habit of letting others choose their friends. For them, I don't like so and so. But they did such and such. If that's the case, I need to shut my church down. Because there's some folks I didn't like, but they were there. I didn't shut uh, Raymond down. I kept going. Somebody said, well, you a pastor. But first of all, I'm a soul of God. I'm a disciple of God. I can't look at my position and stop, amen, doing what I'm doing. Do you stop working because you got your enemies on your job? No, because you want the paycheck. You want that them dead president. Why don't you look at God's house the same way? How much time or how much influence do I have in the church? What am I doing with my time? Am I redeeming the time? As I close tonight, because we're going to get into this a little bit more. A good, a good bootstrapper will be aware that a successful ministry means working with others. Even when they don't share all of the same views and ideas. But are willing to come together for a common goal. To gain the amen. Praise God the success of the assignment that was given to them. They won't get in there and start fighting and being messy. But they'll come together for a common goal. And say yeah, yeah, yeah we can do this. We can do it together. That's what a bootstrapper does. They strap together. In the fields back in the days, I remember the songs they were saying. One person would strike off a song. And everybody joined into that song. Yes. And they sang it together. And guess what it did? It gave them momentum to start picking. And not looking and, lit and feeling the pain of their backs being arched. Back hurting. Pains in their legs. Pains and the sun, and then they couldn't get in any water right then because they was in the middle of the field, in the middle of the starching heat. But they knew somebody was going to strike up a song to give them that momentum. We got to get there, come on! We got to get to the end of this journey. We got to make it. I'm telling you tonight. I'm telling you tonight. We got to make it. I'm telling you, we got to make it. I will, I can, and I shall. Bootstrapping. Bootstrappers. I'm a bootstrapper. I'm going to strap this to my boots and I'm talking about to my mind. Not literal boots, but I'm going to fixate my mind and I'm determined I can, I will, and I must make it. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I am above my fellow man. Therefore, God by God has anointed me with the oil of gladness. I want to thank God for being good, kind, and merciful. I want to thank Him for being the Savior that He is. I want to thank Him for His amazing grace. I want to thank Him for His great, great my God covering and protection, being my chief intercessor. I want to thank Him for being my provider, my Jehovah Jireh. My provider. No matter what I thought I didn't have, God provided. What I thought I wasn't going to make it off, He made me, made it with. He made me allow myself to understand living life on broken pieces. While the enemy decided to sift me as weak, He prayed for me. And tonight I want to tell you, your Savior, He loves you. He's praying for you. Just at the nick of time that you might, at the nick of time that you might think that Satan has done the very, very worst. God said, I'm not going to turn you over to the will of your enemy. I will not give my glory to another. God said, I am your God. I am the Savior. There is none like me. When you go through the rivers and through the flood, he said, I will be with you. I will bring you over into that wealthy place. I took you in just to bring you out. I brought you out just to bring you in. I don't know who I'm ministering to tonight, but bootstrap yourself down. It's your season. There is a prophetic move of God that has taken place upon this earth. 
He said, come and eat. Bring no money. I want you to know this is the season that God said, I'm going to provide for you in places that you've never been provided for. I'm going to show you things that you never thought that I would have shown you. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Yeah, you looking at me. Yes, you, 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 you looking funny. But I'm talking about God. I'm not talking about what Irene said. I'm talking about what God knows he's going to say. He said, listen. He said, my word will never return unto me void. He said, it shall go out and accomplish that that I have commanded it to do. God's word has a commandment on it. He said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word will stand. And since stand tonight, we stand on the promises. The word of God is truth. It is revelation knowledge. He said, I've given you keys to the kingdom. Get your keys. Be about your father's business. Let him bless you and let him bless you real good. God bless you on tonight. And we say thank the Lord for you. We appreciate you much. Don't forget. Don't you dare forget. Write it down. We will see you Wednesday night. It's not going to be what you think. We're going to have, amen, that prophetic word. That's going to be the blessing you ain't seen before. Watch what I tell you. It's going to be great. It's going to be good. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Thank you, amen, praise God. Dr. May Foster Dixon was on, amen, praise God. Wednesday night, amen, praise God. Prophetic verb is going to be on at 7 o'clock. Joshua Martin, thank you for being on. Joshua, we love you. Give, amen, Pastor Martin, my love. Latanya Drury is on. Thank you so much for being on tonight. Amen. It's prophetic verb. Yes, we are going to work that Wednesday night. Wednesday night. Watch what I tell you. It's going to bless you. We're getting ready, amen. Learn so much from this word. Thank you, Pastor, uh, Pastor Barbara Jackson. We love you. Just, hey, Rayma family, love y'all. We love you too, Josh. I thank you for taking our broadcast and sharing it, amen, praise God, on different, amen, places that I didn't know, but thank God for taking us and putting us out there. We appreciate you so much, amen, praise God. My husband did not bring my fan. Amen. It's okay. It's okay. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. Karina, amen, is on. Good afternoon. Thank you, Karina, for being on. Amen. Uh, who else is that? She said, you're welcome. Thank you, Sonia. Amen. Menifee. Blessings to you. God bless you. Amen. If I don't see your name and you're on, uh, Sister Abby is on. Amen. God bless you, Sister Abby. Thank you for coming on. We appreciate you so, so very, very much. Bless the name of the Lord, Minister uh, uh, Andre Wilson Jr., Florida. Thank you for being on, son. I appreciate you so, so very much. God bless you. Dr. Latanya Walker, amen, is on saying thank you. Amen. Praise the name of God. This guy going so fast, I can't read nothing. Huh? But I wanted to say what they said. Thank you, God. Whew. My eyes was getting cross out of just then. I was like, who I can't see it. Amen. Can't see it. Amen. Go ahead. Crystal, hey Crystal, thank you so much for being on. Awesome teacher, teaching apostle. Thank you, Pastor Jackson, again. Amen. Praise God. Josh is saying, Amen. What is they saying? May Foster Dixon said, We must make it. I can, I will, and I shall. I am a bootstrapper. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Mother Mary Hammock is on this evening. God bless you, Mother. We thank God for you. Tawana William, thank you, God. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the living God. I am a bootstrapper. Elder Roxy Reeves is on tonight. Amen. Praise the name of God. Thank God for all of you. Those of you who are on, amen, if I didn't call your name and I didn't say anything, amen, praise God to you. I want you to know how much I love you and appreciate you for being on, amen, tonight. If you could get a small seed tonight of just $25, a small seed of just $25, and just share it with us on tonight. Just share that seed on tonight. Amen. I see a lot of Rama is not on. But you're good. I know this is coming up. Amen. Praise God to some things. And a lot of people are out there traveling. They're vacationing. And I do respect that. And I love that. And I thank God. Amen for all of you. God bless you. We're going off the air. We'll see you. We'll see you soon. Be blessed. And we love you. Bye-bye.